80% of women don't feel they're enough. Self-worth is a big topic. The biggest. The biggest. Why this book is so powerful is in life we don't become what we want, we become what we believe we're worthy of. When you learn to believe you are worthy, everything changes in your life. Your goals and dreams and careers, your family, like future generations of your family. Like it is the one thing that changes everything. On the other side of selling IT Cosmetics for $1.2 billion, surely at that point you felt worthy. If we just achieve enough, then we'll be enough. And it's a lie. If I win or lose, I'm unshakable. Mm -hmm. So now I'm more fearless. The strategy almost doesn't matter if we're not also doing the self-worth work. The time for change has come. No girl, no woman, no person left behind. It's time to really look at your worth. Jamie, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Lindsay, thank you. So grateful to be here. Excited. This feels so long overdue. Mm, yes. And I think it's also happening at the perfect time because I'm so excited about your new book and everything you've been speaking about. Mm. So, OK, why this book now? I mean, why tackle self-worth is a big topic. The biggest. The biggest. The biggest. Why and did you know? I, I mean, so much of my life I realized like I have been trying to feel enough, thinking all of these things would would fix that. And I did not realize that until about two years ago. And so if you, wow. you know, Google my story, you always see Denny's Waitress Builds Billion Dollar Company and all of the things on the outside look like, oh, this person should feel, you know, like they are enough and like they've achieved enough, they, all the things. And there is a moment, Lindsay, when... Um, one of my biggest dreams in my entire life came true, uh, and that was that I met Oprah and was having lunch with her. And everything on the outside looked like, and, I, and by the way, I was very confident at the time, like super confident. Everything was going well, my business, everything. And what I learned in a single split moment in my entire life was that self-confidence is completely different than self-worth. Mm -hmm. And most of us, and self-confidence is important, most of us spend our whole lives doing things that build it. But if underneath it all, we still don't have strong self-worth, we'll never feel fulfilled, we'll continue to sabotage things and not know why, mm -hmm. we'll stay stuck and feel stuck, even if we're feeling confident in our skill set or confident in our growth or confident in our business title or confident in our relationship, we'll stay stuck if we don't have underlying self-worth. And I um, had this moment where after, you know, my whole life dreaming of it, met Oprah, had lunch at her house. Three hours later, at the end of the lunch, uh, she gave me her cell phone number and said, you can call me anytime. And I did not call her for almost four years. And I thought that I knew why. I thought it was that, um, oh, I'm going to wait till the perfect thing to say. Then I'm going to call her. Right? Or everyone must want something from her. I'm going to prove like, you know, I don't need anything. And, I, you know, all these things we tell ourselves. And one day I realized the real reason I hadn't called her was that deep down inside, deep, deep, deep down, I didn't think I was worthy of, of being her friend. And... It was a moment where I realized, oh, wow, I've worked so hard to achieve enough, to, to do enough, to, to, to serve, to love on others, to give, to do all of these things I dreamed of my whole life. Mm -hmm. but, it, but they all built confidence. Right. And, and which is, while it's an internal trait, confidence is, you know, it fluctuates. It's based on the things around us, happening around us, the our, our willingness to try and go for it, how we think we compare to others, um, how we assess our own skills and abilities. It can go up and down if we're winning or losing. But self-worth is deeply internal. It's, it's, it's us knowing exactly as we are that we're worthy of love and belonging, regardless of our wins or losses, regardless of if we have our six-pack abs or not, regardless of any of it. And I realized like, oh, wow, I, I don't. And so Here's the thing that um, that I know too is in my soul, and this is for every single person listening, watching us right now, in your soul, if you really get still and check in, like you know you're enough. 
like in your soul. But our minds will talk us out of it so fast. And I was in this spot where I was sabotaging things in my life because I didn't believe I was worthy of them in my mind. And when I realized, oh, wait a minute, no, I'm a kick-ass friend. Like Oprah would be, you know, <laughs> I'm Lucky. worthy of being yes. Oprah's friend. <laughs> and um, that was the moment I called her. Everything changed. Uh, we taught a class together this last year. And in the class live, she said, um, she held up my book and she said, why this book is so powerful is in life we don't become what we want. We become what we believe we're worthy of. And it was just like this thing just hit me. Um, and I just became obsessed with self-worth and understanding how do we build it, right? Because so many of us spend our whole lives just trying to achieve and trying to get all the stuff. And while that brings growth and confidence, which are really, really important for fulfillment, if you don't underneath it all believe you are enough, you'll never feel fulfilled. You'll it, it, you'll keep achieving the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And you'll think, oh, I still don't feel enough, but I must just need to work harder. Right. I must just need to right. achieve more. Yeah. I must just need to, you know, work out harder in the gym or 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 whatever it might be. And it's all this never ending lie to nowhere. Mm -hmm. And so building like fundamental self-worth, it, it, knowing you're enough uh, as you are, it doesn't make you less ambitious. It actually makes you more ambitious because you're not afraid of failing or, 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 or anything else because your worth isn't dependent on it. Right. Yeah. So it, it's huge. And 80 percent of women, 80 percent of women don't feel they're enough. Mm -hmm. Like seventy-five percent of female executives deal with imposter syndrome. Ninety-one percent of girls and women don't love their body. Yeah. So I wrote worthy because the time for change has come. Yes. Like when you learn to believe you are worthy, everything changes in your life. Mm. Your 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 goals and dreams and careers, your family, like future generations of your family. Like it is the one thing that changes everything. Yes. So. I'm honored to be talking to you about it. <laughs> I And I've actually never heard the distinction between self-confidence and self-worth put so beautifully because mm -hmm. what I love that you're talking about is it's the people we would never expect. I think yeah. for, for many of you watching this episode, you might think, okay, Jamie, at the height of your career on the other side of selling It Cosmetics for $1.2 billion dollars. Surely at that point you felt worthy, but you're you're saying that this realization came so much later into your journey. Yeah. And and same. I think I realized how much a lot of my ambition was coming from a place of trying to fulfill something in me that really can't be fulfilled by external validation. It has to start within. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Isn't that said. true? Because you're you're probably a similar situation for me, yes, right? Right. And and um what drives you? Like to build powerhouse women, to build at your events, to yes. to to, yeah. to all the things, and it, it's I think it's so similar to how I watch you operate in the world. the The impact piece, of course, but the biggest impact we can make, and you're making it with this book, is to share really authentically that we still struggle with this. It's still something every day I'm working to build. So obviously, in the book, people are going to get the tangible, practical steps to to how do you start to build that. But take me back to the moment. Or maybe it was a, a period of time where you're realizing, oh, wow, I have self-confidence. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that I actually have a lot of self-worth or there's some work to do there. What was your next step? Yeah, I am. I'm the kind of person. Um, I think you and I might have this in common. <laughs> when I'm like into something, I'm all in. All in. All in. <laughs> like all in. And I became obsessed with it mm -hmm. um, from talking to every single therapist, thought leader, researcher, mm -hmm. just diving into it. I developed a whole advisory board in my life wow. around how do I really figure this wow. out? Because I realized, oh, this is a thing. Like I actually think when you look at our culture and our society, every like for anybody listening to us right now who feels like they don't know why they feel like something's missing in their mm -hmm. life or missing in their partnership or and no matter what they do they still feel this kind of like like thing in their gut no matter what they achieve next or what job title you still feel like something's missing it's because our culture and well-intended family members and the way we're raised almost everything around us reinforces that if we just achieve enough, 
then will be enough. Yeah. And it's a lie. And so and so what's tricky is every time for a lot of us where we see, you know, someone from school we haven't seen in 10 years or a family member over the holiday, whatever it is, the first thing they say is, what do you do? And, oh, are you married? Oh, do you have kids? Like everything, you know, or, oh, wow, you look great. Mm-hmm. Or they don't say anything about how you look. So then you're <laughs> then thinking you're like, head. they know. <laughs> and all of those things, regardless of your career or your your marital status or your white picket fence or your, all of that is all linked to how we feel about our, our confidence. And so we keep we, we keep learning that, oh, if I just do all those things right, I won't feel like something's missing. So first step is like awareness, like, oh, wow, no matter, right? Because think about in your own life, something that you wanted forever and then you finally got it, right? It could be tied to your career or or anything, your your fitness goals or, or, or your health goals or, you know, or a, a material possession. You finally got that car or that house or whatever it is. Think about something in your life right now that when you finally got it, did it solve all of your problems? Did you finally feel fulfilled and happy forever? Or did you sort of get this short-term temporary high followed by this sort of like descent back to still feeling like, huh, why do I feel like something's missing? Like I'm not enough. And this cycle for most people will go on their entire lives and they try to solve it by the next thing. Yeah. And and so realizing that was huge for me mm-hmm. because again, self-confidence is so important and building those things growth is so important right contribution and serving others or someone beyond yourself is so important those three things are important but they are all multiplied by your level of self-worth yeah and that turns into your level of fulfillment so self-worth is the multiplier in your life to get to fulfillment and it's why if you have you know self your self-worth is a zero you can and you can see this sometimes in public figures, politicians, people that have achieved all this stuff and they have all these material possessions and they have everything they could. But if underneath they don't have self-worth, it'll you'll never feel fulfilled. Mm. And so the first step is just awareness. And for anyone, you know, who's part who's joining us right now and who's like, wait a minute, uh, you know, I do feel like something's missing always. I do feel like it's never enough. It's usually like a huge indicator. Okay. It's time to really look at your worth. Mm. And the fact that 80% of us feel like we're not enough, it's mm-hmm. a big thing. Yes. And and the reality is our economic power as a country, all of these things, love that we are, <laughs> that we never feel enough. And if we just work harder and achieve more and all that. And so there's just so, so much around it. And listen, I'll probably work really, really, really hard every day for the rest of my life. I love doing that. And my mission now is how can I actually feel fulfilled while mm-hmm. I'm doing it? How can I do it from a place of passion and contribution versus a place of how am I feeling this hole of not enoughness? Yes. But self-worth is huge. For for anyone listening who is, you know, in a partnership, like a, like a romantic relationship, uh, and it's not going great or it feels toxic or unhealthy or you're out there looking for someone else, like your level of, of, of love and depth of love and connection with someone else can only ever hit the level of the depth of love and connection you have with yourself. Yes. Every single aspect of our life, we, we don't soar to the level of our, our goals and dreams. We stay stuck at the level of our self-worth. And it is, it's huge. It's, it's really the one thing that changes everything. It is. It's like this onion as you start to peel back the layers. It, yeah. it impacts every major area of life. And yes. what you're helping me understand right now that this journey I've been on this year, particularly, I, I wasn't relating it to self-worth. Mm-hmm. But for anyone who's like listening to this and thinks, well, that doesn't, I don't every day wake up and have this conscious thought of I'm enough, but here's how I've lied to myself. I think it's my edge. Like if I actually just believed I was enough, how would I be motivated to go out there and create the next thing? It's actually, we've taught ourselves that it can be an advantage, which is really just a sneaky way to keep it around. And I think the addiction to some of these beliefs becomes real. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I love that you brought that up because that's our greatest fear as people that are like, so (laughs) proud, like we're so ambitious and all that. We think like, oh, if I, if I think I'm enough, I'm going to be complacent. Right. I'm going to lose my edge. I'm going to then 
not measure up to my calling and potential and offering and why I'm here on this earth. And it's the opposite. It's the opposite. It does not. When you build strong self-worth, the person I know with the strongest self-worth is Oprah. Her entire life, by the way. And, and it's rooted in her identity, in her faith, in all of this. It does not take away from your ambition. It actually makes you more fearless when you go for stuff. Because yeah. if you have strong self-worth alone, it's the multiplier of everything, but it's not. You need more than that to live your highest, truest expression of who you are. You still have to have self-confidence, which is important, right, that you build. Your, your growth, always be growing. And that could be growing in your career. It could be growing in your fitness. It could be growing in your spiritual practice. You have to always have confidence growth and contribution always something beyond yourself and for some people that looks like you know sharing their time with someone else for some for other people it's it's you packing rooms of tons of women and pouring into them for other people it's you know you can feel contribution in your life by smiling at that one neighbor knowing that you're the probably only person they're going to see all day long who sees them like just seeing another person like if you walk into a coffee shop and just see like actually see another person right and, and what happens in that moment when you really see someone else you're going to see a switch in their eye when they feel seen and in that moment of switch they see you back and when you just add that one thing into your life, you now have contribution. Those three things are huge. So self-worth alone doesn't get you fulfillment, but you have to give to those three things. But you can have all those in the world. And if you don't have self-worth, you'll never feel fulfilled. But what I love, just, just to share to your point, I experienced this. And I think that, and I know there's so much evidence out there. When you have strong self-worth, you do not become complacent or lazy or just chill out. Then it's the opposite. You're like, oh, wait, if I win or lose, it, I'm unshakable. Mm -hmm. So now I'm more fearless. If I please that person or don't, I'm unshakable. Yes. So now I'm more fearless. You have that strong step. When all we have is confidence and we just keep achieving and achieving, we're crushed when we're all of a sudden not a people pleaser and someone's mad at us. We're crushed when we let someone else down. We're crushed when we somehow don't please them, even if it means we betray ourselves. Yes. Like it's this never ending cycle. So yeah, um, I think for people that are so, Ed Milet and I talk about this a lot because he's like, like I have a lot of friends like you yes. that are super achievers. Yes. And strong self-worth does not take away your edge. Mm -hmm. It almost just, it, it's like you have a whole higher plateau to stand on yeah. and you have fulfillment underneath it because the worst thing, and so many people do this, is to get to the end of your life going, wow, I crushed all these goals and I still don't feel enough. Mm. Or wow, I accomplished all these things. Everything looks good on the outside, but I don't know why I still feel empty. I still feel like something's missing, you know, and it's so important. And by the way, there's people that think the problem is their marriage or the problem yes. is their job, right? And they, they don't know why it feels like something's missing in their life. So then they, right. you know, try to fill it in all these other places when it's an internal thing. Yeah. You know, it's an internal thing. So, yeah, I wrote I wrote worthy for for every person who just just knows like they're born for more they have and they don't know why they feel like something's yes. missing they don't know why they don't feel like they're enough yeah and i wrote it for everyone who has like self-doubt to destroy and a destiny to fulfill because yes. if you're going to fulfill your destiny and live as the highest truest expression of yourself in this lifetime you have got to build unshakable self-worth underneath it all mm -hmm. if your life is just dependent on your achievements and your self-confidence uh it is going to be a shaky bumpy ride and no matter how high you soar in that area you still still feel not enough inside yes and that's why 80 percent of us deal with it yes. it is such a thing and i'm i'm so grateful for even knowing that stat because i think the biggest lie we tell ourselves is like oh i'm the only one feeling this yes yeah everyone else is out there feeling confident crushing their goals okay so take us back to there's this great line that, that I've heard you share that's in the book. I think you might even have a chapter on it. You're not crazy. You're just new. Mm. And you talk about that person who's in that season of life that they know there's more. For you, you talk a lot yes. about your story of being a waitress at Denny's and knowing there was more and thinking it was going the route of having your own TV show and interviewing people. And, and there's just been this life journey. So for anyone who doesn't know your story, mm. how did worthiness show up for you in the beginning of your journey 
building it cosmetics because there was a lot of failure. And I think that's the point where it can start to reinforce that unworthy belief if we're not careful. So yeah, there's a, the, the book has over 20 tools um, on it like right now. What can you do in your life right now mm-hmm. to apply them to your life right now <laughs> to start building a really, really strong self-worth? And it has been, um, it's been an issue for me my whole life. And one I just realized, that's why I sabotage the thing. Uh, that's why when I was waitressing at Denny's and I used to look around and be like, I could run this place, but why did I not quite believe it? Right. Like, why did I not quit? Like all of those things where where we have these thoughts, but then we doubt ourselves out of our own destiny Mm. if we're not careful. So, okay, so so two things um, in the book to answer your question. So there's a whole chapter called um, called You're Not Crazy. You're just first. If you you listening right now, (laughs) if you show up in this world as who you authentically are, and not everyone does. Let's keep it real. But if you if you are one of the brave ones who shows up as you authentically are, by definition, you are first. So you don't have to create a huge product idea that no one's done or, or be the first to fly an airplane, whatever it is, right? If you actually just, and I, and I don't say just because this is a big thing, but if you just show up, if you're one of the brave ones who shows up as you authentically are, you are first. There has never been another you before there's no one else out there with your fingerprints your your the iris of your eye your tongue print we all have a unique heartbeat no one else has had the experiences you've had or feels the emotions you feel or has the ideas you have so if you show up as who you are you are first and if you are first do and you're brave enough to be you do not be surprised if you feel like not everyone gets you do not be surprised if you feel like you don't always belong there's never been a you before. No one's ever met or seen anyone quite like you. And so many of us think there's something wrong with us <laughs> if we don't feel like we're like other people or we don't fit in or we're odd or we're quirky. And, you know, growing up, and maybe maybe someone can relate to this who's who's joining us right now, but growing up, I always felt like I had these big ideas and and my family, I mean, I have five families. I was adopted. It's a whole thing. And I have loving families. I'm so blessed. And even with that, they would say things like, you're crazy. Like, what do you, like, you know, I'd have these big ideas on how to change the world or like how to launch a business, like different things like that. And it was always this vibe of things like that don't happen to people like us. And I would always just felt odd. And when I was in my 20s and I was um, anchoring the news and all these things were going on in my life, it was the first time I actually ever went to therapy. And the therapist, I said to her, Everyone's telling me I'm crazy. Like I have these big ideas. I'm like, am I crazy? And she's like, you're not crazy, but I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> and um, and she kind of proceeded to tell me that when you're the first in your family or the first in your peer group or the first in the environment you're raised around to kind of think different or have, you know, different ideas or dreams or hopes that you can so easily feel like you don't fit in and like you don't belong. And so many people their whole life will silence who they are, they will cancel themselves out of their own calling to try and get love and belonging and fit in. And she said, when you're one of the brave ones who's going to put yourself out there, like like uh, 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 you're going to feel this. And I remember this moment that hit me. It was like this light bulb that burst, uh, this huge aha moment where I realized I'm not crazy. I'm just first. And for every person out there who needs to hear this, you might be the first in your your family or your friend group to to want to launch the business, to want to put on an event, to want to like put your ideas and offerings out there, any of those things. And I've told myself these words now my entire life so often when building at cosmetics, we got so many rejections, right? And 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 you know, when I launched at cosmetics, nobody was online taking their makeup off, right? This was like before YouTube was big, everything and and Every beauty company out there just about was using overly photoshopped images. There was no 
diversity and, and, and no, I mean, it was just a very, and, and I would, I remember I'd go to Sephora and Ulta and all the department stores and QVC and I was told no after no after no. And I was showing images of myself with no makeup and bright red rosacea. I was showing images of women of every different age, shape, size, skin tone. And they would always like, especially the department stores would always say to me, women will never buy makeup from images like that. You have to use unattainable aspiration is what they'd always say, which means like, pictures you could never even possibly look like because they're not even real. Those women um, don't even look like that. They right. don't even look like that. Exactly. And uh, and and there were just so many times mm. where I'd have to say those words to myself. Okay, I'm not crazy. I'm just first. Like I'm trying to do this my way. I'm trying to do it different. And if you don't have tools in your toolbox on on how to do this, it's so easy to start conforming, to doubt yourself out of your own destiny. So the, yeah, there's a whole chapter on 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 how you're not crazy you're just first. And uh, and it's so empowering. There's, there's a whole other chapter too on how to change your relationship with rejection to change your entire life. Wow. And so part of what you asked too, the second, the second part is just so many of us, you know, like, like right now, if we just ask everyone who's with us, what would you do if you had no fear of rejection or failure? Mm. Almost everyone has an answer which means they have a fear of rejection or failure because right. they're not right. going for that thing. And the tricky thing is, as human beings, we're wired to avoid pain at all costs. So when, you know, when right now, if I were to ask everyone, when you get rejected or you fail at something, what's the first thought you have? For most people, it's really painful. It's something like, I'm not enough or I'm a loser. I should have never tried. I'm not smart enough. All these things, right? When, Whenever... Um, I've done this quite a few times with groups of women where we have these conversations and the things that they share, that's their first thought when they have rejection or when they experience rejection or failure are so harsh. And for everyone with us, like if you ask yourself that right now and be really honest with yourself, what's the first thing you think of? I'll ask you, Lindsay, what's the very first thing you think of when you experience rejection? Always, failure. I'm not enough. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. My whole life, I'm like, yep, there's proof again. I'm not enough. And that, whatever whatever you just thought listening with us, for Lindsay, it's not enough. For me, I'm my default my whole life has been, yep, I'm not enough. That is your current definition of rejection. That's your, And most of us, we're not even aware of it. So if that is your current definition of rejection and it's painful – we're going to avoid going for the thing. We're going to stay stuck. We're going to not not put ourselves out there. And I have a whole chapter two in Worthy. Is, it was almost its own book <laughs> because it is like a whole masterclass of yeah. how when you change your relationship with rejection, you change your life. And we go through this four-part framework on how you identify like your current definition, which we all just did, and then and you go through new, true definitions of, of rejection failure that you then replace every time it happens until you rewire yourself to become mm. fearless about it. And for me, how I went from, you know, hundreds and hundreds of rejections and teetering on bankruptcy for years to eventually every single one of those people that told me no, Sephora, Ulta Beauty, QVC, every single one of them. And some, it took years. Sephora, it took over six years of them saying no, 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 no. But but every one I eventually turned into a yes. And we eventually built a billion-dollar business. We became number one in the country in uh, luxury makeup, according to NPD. It was, I mean, the... We passed all the brands that I used to save my Denny's tip money to buy one of their lipsticks. Like, it was just wow. wild. But part of it was changing my relationship with rejection. And right now, I have a lot of issues I'm always dealing with, but fear of rejection and failure is not one of them. Like, I am literally fearless with rejection or failure. It does not bother me. Now, when it happens, like, there was a moment um, I was going through hundreds of rejections and one day I was so close to giving up and I googled every person I admire every thought leader every business leader every you know incredible woman who's changed the world every single one of them has gone through so many rejections right every one of them when you read their story they're just the brave ones willing to keep going anyways and so one of my very first new definitions of rejection was okay when this happens to me I'm not going to think oh yeah there's proof I'm not enough I'm literally going to make the decision 
that this next time I get rejected, I'm going to be like, this is a victory because I'm not sitting on the sidelines of life. Like I'm one of the brave ones willing to go for it. Wow. I'm one of the brave. And so every time rejection started happening to me, I literally rewired myself to be like, this is a victory because I'm one of the brave ones willing to keep going for it. Another great one is rejection is God's protection. Yes. You know, rejection is yes. God's protection. And I would look back on my life and think about the dude that broke my heart who I wanted it to work out so bad. And then I'm like, thank God it didn't work out. Yes. Like rejection is God's yeah. protection. And so I start building a toolkit of these definitions and they can't be made up. You have to know in your soul they're true. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I literally believe them to the point where now it's like when you look at so many people who have you know, achieve things that are on our goal list, right? And in, 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 in the case of me building a billion dollar company, it is almost never an accident. It mm-hmm. is, there are tools that, <laughs> that literally yeah. help you overcome all the things that keep people stuck. And so I tried to pour every one of them into Worthy uh, because if I can save someone from crying themselves to sleep, doubting themselves out of their own destiny, staying stuck, canceling themselves out of their own calling, right? We talk about cancel culture, like the most prevalent form of cancel culture no one ever talks about is us canceling ourselves before we even try. That's that's the most prevalent form of cancel culture. And anyone who's ever done it knows what I'm talking about. And I've done it, right? It's why I didn't call Oprah for four years. It's like... If we do not have strong self-worth, if we underneath it all don't believe we're worthy of the thing, right, it won't happen. It'll never happen. And the the danger with fear of rejection and failure is we start to believe those definitions that you and I just went through about I'm not enough, et cetera. And eventually, for a lot of people, we start to believe we're a failure. And that's when it takes root at an identity piece. And when it takes root at an identity level, that's when it just just destroys your self-worth. So building like literally one step at a time in the whole book is like one tool at a time to raise that foundation of self-worth that you have that's literally the plateau of, of everything. It is. And as I'm just like hearing you talk about everything that we're going to get inside the book and thinking about this community that I love so much. We talk about going after our big ideas. Mm, yeah. The strategy almost doesn't matter if we're not also doing the self-worth work. Yes. Because yes. eventually, well, even if we reach success, it's either not fulfilling or we sabotage. So it's out now. When yes, people hear yes. this uh, this episode, you're going to be able to get your hands on it because everyone, I'm sure, has already paused and gone to order their copy. But tell us where we can get the book. Tell us if there's anything just special that we should know about how it can best support you. And and you're also doing something really beautiful with all the proceeds to it, so yeah. share that too. Yeah, I'm donating 100% of the proceeds, 100% of my author royalties, 100% of every penny ever sent to me from the publisher. All of it is being donated for Worthy. And um, and this is really just, honestly, Lindsay, it's like my life's greatest work. It, it is. really is. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a famous, you know, saying by Roy Vaden that we're best positioned to serve the person we once were. And most of my life, even though I kept accomplishing all these things, I didn't believe I was enough. And I just know, oh my gosh, like this past shift, becoming obsessed with self-worth has changed everything. So this book is really for every person who, you know, does not want to lose their edge, who actually wants to take their ambitions and dreams yes. to a whole new level and who actually wants to enjoy them while they're doing it. Mm. It's for the person who doesn't understand why they keep putting the great guy in the friend zone because actually underneath it, they don't think they're worthy of a great guy. And so you become attracted to people who are going to repeat patterns that, that reflect your level of self-worth. I mean, there are so many layers to this that yes. when you believe you are worthy, it will fundamentally change how you are in your friend groups, how you make adult friends, by the way, like how you are in your career and your level of fulfillment when you achieve it all. So yeah, I'm donating 100% of the proceeds and um, you can go to worthybook.com and there's lots of great bonuses and everything else. They're going to go away soon, but we're launching now and I'm excited and it's anywhere books are sold, uh, which is great. And my one big ask, this is my big ask. When you get your copy of Worthy, I ask that you read it. How many books do we get? And we know they can probably change our lives. We don't really. Please read it. And when you're done with your copy, please give it to another woman. 
that is my two asks. That is all I ask yeah. is that you read it and then you give it to another woman and pass it on. I literally made a library card in the back of the book. Old school, like when you're like a library you card. You can see who had yes. it before you. You can see Wait, who had it before brilliant. you. And you write your name and write it uh. to who you're passing it to. And if you want to keep your copy and you gift one to someone, write their name on your library card. This is, uh, I know in my soul that, especially together and you know this better than anyone else like when women come together like we will rise higher like it is ridiculous that 80 percent of women don't believe we're enough and 75 percent of us deal with imposter syndrome it is like the time for change has come no girl no woman no person left behind so i'm on a mission Amen. <laughs> and i'm so excited so <laughs> oh my goodness i can't wait to get my copy i can't wait to gift it to friends because it is the most important book that i have probably ever read so thank you so much for writing it I have just one final question, and this is fun. I think just in in the landscape of what you have accomplished so far internally and, of course, the success that you've had in, in the world. But we love to celebrate all the big and small moments that we often overlook these opportunities to just really reflect and say, you know, I did great or I love how I showed up in that challenge. We just call it a powerhouse moment mm. and it could be anything big or small. But when I ask what's a recent powerhouse moment you want to celebrate right now, mm -hmm. what's the first one that comes to mind? The first one that comes to mind is I am proud that my focus is on really seeing other people and you and I are together in person right now for the first time. For me, I know why I think I'm here, and it's because I see you. I see how you show up in the world, Lindsay. I see how you pour into other women. I see how you're like this light. I see how you're this force for good. I see all of this, and I'm sitting here looking at you, and I'm just, I am grateful more so than building a billion dollar company, more so than any of that. I'm grateful that I, what I care about most is, is seeing other people and, and celebrating them and honoring them when I see them and saying, how can I show up for them? So for me, my powerhouse moment I want to celebrate is just that being here with you. Um, thank you for showing up for me and, and sh me showing up here with you is because I see you. I feel like you see every other woman the way I do. And I think it's also why your community is exploding. And I think that it's so important. And, I, and just one more thing to add to that. I don't care where you live, what you're doing, what's going on in your life, your wins, your losses, your successes. If you just take time today to see one other woman, there is a very good chance you are the only person in her entire day or week or month that sees her. And that's our power. That's like our power is when we come together, see each other, you know, pour into each other when we can, uh, uh, receive being poured into when we can, you know, and, and all help each other know that we're worthy because we are. We are. And you do that better than anyone I've ever met, even more so in person. I think when you meet someone who is even more real, even more heartfelt, even more grounded when you meet them in real life as they are on social media or online, it's uh, it's really special. And, and you are just such a special person. I'm so grateful for this time together. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.